All right. Look at these beautiful folks. We have Fusion X Griever over on the side. I don't know why I said your name all French this time. <laughs> don't know why I said his name all French, but that's it. Um, Fusion X Griever today. And Waylon Rusellas, who's fam by our people. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna go in. Uh, we're just keeping it, you know, our great little friendship squad here. And we're gonna go in and we're gonna do this. We're gonna do the first dungeon. And it's gonna be a good time. And I'm excited. Our first dungeon ever in Final Fantasy XIV. No, <laughs> we're gonna do our first run of the dungeon, I should say. So let me go ahead and get us queued in. I did swap over to White Mudge. Although, lately I've been playing a lot of Astrologian too. So I was really tempted. I was tempted for a second to go in on Ast and said, I'm curious to see what they're going to be doing with uh, balance changes coming into the new expansion as well. Honestly, I'm surprised I didn't like get an immediate pop. Although, it is a few days after patch release, so I suppose that's acceptable. But it'll be fun. I mean, we've had a lot of discussion in the community. Me jumping around to five different topics and now coming back. We've had a lot of discussion in the community about things like job balance. We've talked about it a lot, even on Aetherite Radio. Fusion, Griffin, and I as well. I'm so sorry to my to anybody who's French that's listening to me. I'm the worst. I'm bad at all accents, not just one, so it's nothing personal. Just having fun with it today. Um, so... <laughs> we had a lot of information and discussion um, with like current job balancing, stuff coming up, all that sort of thing, and what kind of changes they're going to bring to the table for the new expansion and beyond, which is usually when they do considerable rebalancing. We'll just have to wait and see. I'm hoping that they keep a baseline of some complexity in classes and tweak some things. The two minute meta, it's being reinforced in a lot of ways with that cycle and class building and buff windows. But I'm hoping we still get some variety and interest and that maybe we see a little bit of that come back in even with the next expansion, but let's cue! I'm too busy talking! I'm gonna make us miss our cue! Okay. Alright. How's it gonna look from the get-go? How's it gonna be from the get-go? How's everybody's portraits gonna be from the get-go? I like the idea of a Charlian dungeon, so I mean, I'm pretty sold on it already. Oh! It is literally just like a font of ether. <laughs> Look at the happy polar bears! Oh, that's a less happy monster! The music is so chill, I love it. Oh, big boys! This is pretty! I'm excited! I always love a good new dungeon. All right, portrait game good, everybody. <laughs> Except for Fusion. Unbelievable. <laughs> Fusion actually had a really good portrait set up, so I'm assuming this probably has something to do with the cursed image issue. So we won't judge Fusion too harshly for this one. You know, you can be forgiving. Chat, it's tough. It's tough. In the comments, everybody can be can be kind. We've all been there. You queue in, you've changed one thing about your character, and your portrait is gone. Okay, so far... Incoming damage is pretty decent. I'm gonna crank up our music volume here in a second. It's a remix of the Charlie and theme. A rearrangement. I like the instrumentation and things they use in it though. And the mob's taking a little bit longer to go down. We're not like blasting through them um, like we did in some of the other dungeons. So, a little bit meatier, a little bit meatier. Yeah, 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 there we go. Turn it up, turn it up! <laughs> Get that music so right. I genuinely, I just, I don't understand. I want to, but in my soul, I don't understand anyone that plays through the whole game initially, like in their first story run, and doesn't have the music on. You gotta listen to it at least once and then do whatever you want, you know? The music in this game is so good though. Okay, we got some more big icy boys. 
Sure, we'll put a little extra down. Why not? Why not? Just in case. Just in case. Okay. Some big conal attacks. I like the surroundings though. It's fun too to just see a little bit more of Charlian because Charlian is sort of, we have like those couple maps that have um, Charlian the city state, right? And what remains of it. And then we have, you know, some of the stuff with um, outside of that in the bigger zone with Dravania and the settlement that they had there. But then we really only have the Labyrinthos zone and the city. So to actually get to see even a little bit more of kind of, you know, Charlian's expansion to like the other islands, the other structures. I saw it! What? What is that? What is that? What is it? Oh, it has a lot of teeth! It has a lot of teeth in a place, like in rows and ways that teeth don't normally go! Maybe they're not teeth, maybe they're actually like little, um, almost like baleen, you know, like, they kind of look like they could be that. Tidal breath is gonna go front, I'm assuming. Oh, what a weird critter! Something feels so weird about its, like, legs in the front! <laughs> and its kind of salamandery head? It's called Lingbacher. Okay, we've got upsweep, we have crystal accumulations. They are resonating. Okay, they're gonna do an AoE around them. Okay, I'm guessing that's our tank buster body slam sounds like, oh no, that's an AoE, oh! It's made bigger ones, so probably they're going to resonate with a larger radius would be my assumption. Pulsing, radiating. I wonder if there'll come a time where he does them in like multiple waves and then you like you have no choice like you have to move between them because you're gonna get hit at some point unless you like know how to position. Who knows? Tidal breath, that'll be front. <laughs> what a weird little critter. <laughs> it's got like a pudgy Oh my god, that's what it is! The body is like the dragon model body. And then they've put like a weird head on <sighs> Okay, we've got small ones and we've got long ones. So Oh, oh no. Oh no, no no no. No, no no no. No no no. My brain knew what to do, but I didn't execute. <laughs> My brain was like, the small ones have less to pull, so they're going to detonate for and then it was already happening. That's the tank buster, Sonic Blue. <laughs> oh boy. Sonic Blue. Ba -ba -ba -da -da -ba -da. <laughs> Can't be the only person that thought that, right? I've seen some of the new dungeon gear here or there. I wasn't. I wasn't wildly impressed by it. We'll see. I haven't actually seen a ton of it except for maybe. Like, one set that I saw a character wearing. Distance helm. <laughs> it's so neat! Oh, I love it. It's so pretty. Look at that, like, waterway down there. Wow. Wow. Okay, I gotta get up there to heal the tank. Hold on. I gotta heal the tank! And then we'll look around while we heal. Sheepies! Okay, so they have this sort of like network, like the ethereal lines that kind of move between, which is interesting. And then sort of towers and buildings. So beautiful. The like huge ravines with the waterways. I am all about this aesthetic. This sort of Grecian inspired fantasy mashup of the Charlian architecture. And trolls! We get more trolls! I just noticed! 
I like the idea that the where the wild things are trolls are just, uh, you know, like they are, is it endemic? Is that the word? That they naturally, like, live here and, and this is their, like, natural environment. Apparently also giant rainbow golems. <laughs> I mean, all right, yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe infused by a variety of different ethereal sources. I'm just gonna greet on everything, because I can use it to upgrade some of my classes, but I'm going Omni 94. Also, you can just exchange them. If nobody else wants them, you can go take them to the Grand Company. You can get some Grand Company seals. You can get some material coffers if you're max rank. So, so far, I wouldn't necessarily say that I think the mobs are more interesting in the sense that, like, they have more specific, I don't know, mechanics or things to navigate, although that's not necessarily something that we always see. There's, like, a like a conal attack and stuff, which is something that we oftentimes see with these kinds of, um, they're not behemoths, but that same kind of model. Um, but they definitely seem to be hitting harder. It takes longer to melt them. The tank is having to, like, keep an eye on their health. I'm definitely having to use some stuff, not, like, a, a huge amount, but some stuff. Wow, wow, wow! <gasps> so pretty! Holy cow! It's the spot where there's like a surplus of ether. Arcus! Some things happened to this bear! Battle cry, probably an AoE. Wow, this is so pretty, though. The mushroom! Lightning leap. Okay, it's gonna jump over. Oh, and then it's gonna pulse out and probably detonate at the ends, would be my guess. Oh, 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 whoa, 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 whoa! And along the actual rifts. Okay, good to know. Okay, same deal here, so we're gonna wanna get away and in between. That's a nice little variation on that, as opposed to just traveling to an endpoint and detonating, adding an extra level. Ripper Claw, Tank Buster. I like this uh, Charlene kind of platform that we're standing on here. With the wave designs and the sort of Nautilus. Okay, big! Oh, big! I'm gonna have to look up too what all the names of these different bosses mean or like our references to. They always work in a ton of really interesting references. And with the most recent Pandemonium installation, which I have done, um, very interesting and excited to talk about it live with everybody on Twitch. Um, once our spoiler two weeks are up, oh, it's gonna have a back jump. And one of these. Okay. All right. Oh, ho, ho, ho. that's a little spicy. And it keeps going. Okay. Okay. And a back jump. Now this is a fun mechanic. This keeps you on your toes. Nice little movement sort of challenge here. Of course, the increased radius of stuff now does mean that basically my, uh, <laughs> my asylum takes the whole arena. I feel like asylum was one of the ones that they made bigger with this patch, although I don't have the patch notes in front of me and I'm just kind of working off of my instincts, but a few different classes got expanded radius or like unique animations or animation updates as they kind of talked about. Um, okay, okay. Very cool, very cool. This whole place is so pretty. I just want to go like do a, a million photo shoots in here or take some of my Charlie and RP characters in here and just like a little photo shoot time. Crystal Cavern. Whoa, 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 whoa! What? Okay, now this is a Crystal Cavern! Wow. That's something else. That's really gorgeous. Holy cow. Okay, let's get up in here. I also like that they've reused some of the, um, sort of like elemental 
fairy kind of models here. I like these. I like these ones a lot. They're cool. Oh, do some AOE. This is so pretty in here. I like that last boss's mechanics, though. Having to deal with it, navigate those like overlapping kind of um, AOE's area of denial sort of things in a narrow space, a narrow arena. Once you kind of get the pacing of it, not too bad, but I think a nice concept to see them like play around with with that. Wow, that is cool. That like big, the big fount up ahead. All right, so let's just greet all our stuffs. Beautimus, as Zanidra would say. Zanidra is one of my fellow fellow co-hosts on Aetherite Radio. One of our fellow co-hosts. Ow. I wonder what causes things like an ethereal font. Is it just, I don't know, kind of like um, a naturally occurring thing? Is it just part of where the life stream like is compressed in a sense and then coalesces in more force? Is it just a culmination of um, ethereal flow? It's very interesting. Does something like does some sort of huge thing have to have happened in a place that makes it kind of like a center for that sort of accumulation? We have had them talk about places where, like, aether flow gets stagnant or it, um, you know, a lot of times they have little sprites where they, in those areas, as we kind of learned about, actually, I think, sometime around the 5.3 era, there was discussion when, we go, when you go to Azzy's Law and stuff about that, but um, you could maybe say that... I'm like, what's the boss? What's the boss? Oh, that's so beautiful. You could almost say that, uh those little sprites and things might have some kind of inflection of that. Tentacles? Ether squid? Are they reusing that old octopus model? Oh my gosh. Octo mammoth. It has been a really long time since Final Fantasy XIV gave us a tentacle dungeon boss. Wow, the nostalgia is real. Holy cow, some whole breaker flashbacks happening right now. <laughs> okay, all right, you know, not exactly the boss that I thought would be setting the stage here at the end, but I mean, still pretty fun. <laughs> okay, do we have anything new? Okay, we'll do that. Oh, that backdrop, so gorgeous, okay. But yeah, I'm wondering if something like an Aether Font even could be like an area where the flow has kind of maybe stagnated to some extent and like collected. I don't know. I'm not an Aetherologist, so... Octo Stroke. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about that as a name. <laughs> I don't want to be stroked by the Octo. Oh, oh, we're in a bad spot. We're in a bad place. Okay, and then they're gonna do staggered line AoEs. Okay, vivid eyes. Oh boy, those are persistent, so those are still gonna keep going. A little sweeper Rooney. All right, saline spit. Maybe targets one person. No, there's bubbles here. Oh no. <laughs> I didn't know for a second if that was a walk to it and soak it kind of deal, or if that was a don't do that kind of deal. Now, one thing I will say though. Oh, that's huge. Oh, geez. Oh, gosh. That's like the. Is it the Sestasha hard octopus fight? Where there's the huge radius? I am, I am liking that they've done kind of a half ring arena in this, shaking it up so it's not just the traditional circle. Let's see. Okay, he is. Using crystals that have a laser beam. Why do I think they're gonna go like beep? Maybe not. Maybe they'll just do a little. Okay. No beep. 
More tentacles. <laughs> More tentacles! Breaststroke? I don't need a breaststroke either. You can breathe up on yourself. I'm good. Okay, is this the one that does the big circles? I'm guessing for that you want to find one where there's not one on either side. And then we stay away from these. This is where we go on these little middle platforms. Then we're gonna go in, but we're gonna try... <laughs> I should've popped Sprint! It's alright, we're fine, we're fine! Telekinesis! So it's gonna make those crystals again. That it then animates and does a little explosion with. I mean, we're at 15%, so I feel like it's probably most of the major mechanics for this one. But some interesting little things there. Again, like playing around with the sort of patterns and ground patterns. Tidal roar, it's an AOE. And very, like, memorable backdrop here in Boss Arena. I like it! This is a good dungeon! Excellent dungeon would dungeon again. Good little mechanics. There weren't any wildly spicy bits. There weren't any massive pull corridors. But the bosses, I think, had unique mechanics. They had some kind of fun, dancey aroundy gimmicks, having to like move around whatever patterns they put down. <laughs> fun to see Return of the Tentacle boss. Even, you know, if, hey, tentacles might not be your thing, or maybe they are, in which case, I'm so happy for you. <laughs> But, really beautiful landscape. I do think that all the dungeons, well, most of the dungeons so far, particularly this one and then the uh, void one, they have felt very much like there are some really, like, cool vistas, if you will, or cool reveals of the progression as you go through, and definitely coming down into this ethereal crystal cave is so cool. I This is like very memorable to me. This is going to stick in my mind. Hi, little bun friend. There you go. A little pet for you. Oh, and the friend's here! Okay, what do we got? Had it been squid, we might have taken some for a <laughs> I mean, it was a squid! What did Thancred say? Seems the geyser is just beyond. How about these two? What you gotta say? Nothing to it. Mayhap these waters are connected to the sea. Ah, uh, so like, it came in from the sea and up. I can see that. <laughs> oh, that's so pretty. Wow, 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 wow. Hold up. Let's just do a little... Let's just do a little moment. Let's just have a little moment together. As we look around this cave. Okay, nothing too much up there, but the actual, like, pathway up sight lines are really good. Our friends, more crystalline structures. Yeah, that's beautiful. That's really neat. I wonder if this is gonna end up having some kind of thing more to it at some point, or if it's just going to end up being one of those things where, you know, we use it here to siphon some stuff off, and then it just kind of remains a thing that's in the world. Alright, let's see. Oh, I like that it has the little front bib, back bib. Double bibs all the way! And the little ornamentation on it is pretty cool. What is that? Thaumaturge and stuff? Alright, sure, why not? Alright, sure, why not? Thanks, friends! It was fun! <laughs> Thanks, you too! I appreciate it for our first time run here. Now, are we gonna immediately pop in a cutscene? Probably. Probably. This is a cool location, though. And I wonder if they're going to discuss a little bit more about the ethereal stuff. I, l I mean, you don't need to go too nitpicky into actual magical systems in games. I think we all learned that from midi-chlorian in Star Wars. But it is nice sometimes to have, like, a general kind of sense of the magical systems and flows. Which I think 14 does really well. Because then you can kind of spin off of it and immerse yourself more in it. Let's clear those monsters out so research can continue here.
Much obliged for clearing the way. We'll get to work at once. I don't think I was that far off on his voice. <laughs> Just like giant kegs of ether. Filling these up will take a good while. I appreciate it if you stood watch till we finished. I ain't getting chewed to chum by some ether bloated bugger. <laughs> Arden's like, I will protect you. I will do it. Oh, by the by. Where were you planning on putting these to use? We could deliver them by airship, see? Provided that ain't too far. Gollum's not that far. We would need them transported to Gallimund, to the Tower of Babel. Ah, uh, that's a long old journey. Oh, it is. It is apparently too pretty long far away. Right? a direct flight. Tell you what, we'll send them over with the scheduled shipment of provisions headed that way. Excellent. I don't know about any of you, but there has been some controversy recently. What your opinions? I don't know what your opinions are on it. I should say, about the fact that there might not be airships in Final Fantasy 16. And it's funny because having read that, I went, airships are kind of iconic to like the Final Fantasy series, right? But does every world have to have some kind of equivalent? I don't know. And I feel as though there have been Final Fantasy games before that haven't had them or haven't had them to that extent. Or maybe you see them, but you don't really like interact with them kind of thing. I don't know. I'd have to actually dig through it. But I like that we have airships in 14. They have a bit of that like steampunk feel. I'll make the arrangements as soon as we get back. Save some poor chocobos having to drag this lot through the snow. You have our thanks. We shall not forget your generosity. Oh, so it sort of like siphons it in. I guess it could just be. Because there, like, are souls that are composed of ether, right? But there's also just, like, the natural current and flow of ether. Everything seems to be proceeding apace. I dare say he would have been fine without me. So it could very well be that there are just, like, naturally occurring springs of just raw ether. Things like this, like this font, right? Kind of like geysers or stuff like that. And that the actual, like, flow of ether itself while you get into the life stream does have, like souls in it, that there's just a lot of additional ether that's even just a natural resource, right? I could definitely see that. And no, we needed you thank Grid, at least for emotional support. <laughs> for Zero's emotional today? support. You were not bound by contract or the threat of force, and you gain no advantage by devaluing your own contribution. Yet you must be bound by something to speak thus. What is it? What binds me? <laughs> A belief, I suppose. Born of our shared struggles. No matter where my comrades go, I have faith they will be fine. For I know that they will walk their chosen path as surely as I walk mine. I trust them, in short. Trite though it may sound. Trust. I don't know if that really answers Zero's question. Like, the question being, why do you devalue yourself? <laughs> Thigrid's like, I devalue myself because I trust that they're all better than me. <laughs> I'm kidding. But, like, you know, I, I think the, the connection there being, you know, I trust in their capabilities, so when I say that they didn't really need me here, it's less that I'm devaluing myself, maybe this is it. It's less that I'm devaluing myself, and it's more so that I have faith that they are more than capable. Like, they don't need to rely on me, so in a sense, you know, I'm grateful to be included, but like, I know that they can accomplish great things on their own. I think maybe that's the direction. I remember the word. Yeah, I trust you too, I love you. How long has it been since last I used it? It had no place in my dealings. Not with other Voidsend, and certainly not with Xenos. 
Not even in the time before darkness engulfed the world. Full often did memoriates betray their own. Corrupted by the very power they wielded. You could trust no one but yourself. Are alone you we fought. And alone we fell. I wouldn't know how to trust. We will teach you. Is there some trick to it? Love. We'll just love each other. <laughs> <laughs> just stay close to this one. You'll learn in no time. Hey. Hey. I do love Zero. I feel so redundant. You've all heard me say it like five million times. Hi. Absolutely fine. <laughs> I confess I thought thou mightst have more words of counsel to offer. Oh, she'll soon get the hang of it. Even without my help. After our work here is done, I'll see myself back to the shadows. But before that... I take it you've heard as well. Heard what? The Void stuff? Indeed. The client seeketh Archons, and twould seem our extensive travels and neutrality make us prime candidates. The client? This is the same person that was recruiting Aaronville? Well, assuming we take on the request, I suspect I'll be stuck with you again. Don't let me down, hmm? It's because you two love each other. <laughs> you sass each other because you love each other. I love that. I love that Thangrid's like, yeah, I trust that all my comrades will just, I know that they'll do what they need to do and they're going to be great. And then Thangrid goes over to his boyfriend and it's like, don't let me down. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> that was good, though. Some good moments. We are truly indebted to Koko. I must invite him to Radzatan as a guest of honor. By simply staying close to you, will I really learn about trust? Yes. Trust me, you will. <laughs> Zero's straight as an arrow, isn't she? I mean, not in her sexuality, for sure, but in her demeanor. A refreshing contrast to our more circuitous, circuitous, circuitous company. She's so good. They're all so good. You're all so good. New, old, my new and old babies. I love you all. My old at heart, but young of flesh babies. <laughs> Rianche. Well, not like, not like super young of flesh. You ever just say a collection of words and then the moment you say it, you go, well, not those ones. <laughs> I'm gonna strike those ones off the record. Is there a way I can make these better? The thing that I just said. Mm, no. The appropriately adult aged mature of flesh and old of heart, Rianje. That's the best fix I've got for the crimes I've committed. <laughs> okay, let's talk to Rianje. To not only allow us use of the tanks, but to arrange their transportation to Gullamold besides. Blessed are we to count Kokol among our allies. Unto thee we must also give thanks, Thancred, for coming to our aid on such short notice. Please, you already know I'm happy to help. Don't hesitate to call on me again. Okay. Um, well, we don't really need any of these. Probably. It's a good time to sell Materia. Now, if you're watching this way in the future, you're gonna have to wait until the next raid patch, but good time to sell Materia right now. Till next time. Bye, Thinkrid. You may now enter the Aether font. I'm gonna have to go back through and do runs with the characters to see what lore they have about it or what comments they have. I'm sure Zero talks about the accumulation of Aether and things. Now, is this the same? Yes. Okay, then let's keep going. Like, fear to flame. Whoa. 
With the tank's transportation thus arranged, our first task is complete. We may now turn our attention to the second. To wit, obtaining the blessing of the Ilsebard contingent to use the Tower of Babel to channel energy unto the moon. Our destination is Camp Brokenglass, where we may present our petition to Commander Lucia. Okay, let's go! Goodbye, Fab. Isn't that a beautiful bun? Look at that beautiful bun right there. <laughs> the thing is, I can't help it. If I see any of your characters in game, I'm like, look at how beautiful that character is. Look at how amazing that character is. I love this character. I would die for this character. <laughs> There we go, a little bit of love. We need to go to Garleval. Oh no, God, I killed <laughs> I killed him with love. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but also I regret nothing. Goodbye. <laughs> Alright, let's go to Elsa Bard. I'm also gonna turn down the music a little bit because we got our jams up in the dungeon. But now we're gonna dial it back just a little bit. I don't know why. I think maybe I'm one of the few people where <laughs> I just like, I adjust my audio mix based off of what's happening. Major story beat, thematic moment, crank the music. Other stuff, I, I'll usually dim it a little bit more so that like my focus can just be on the text, it can just be on the dialogue. I keep it audible still, but like not as prominent in the mix, which then leads to a lot of just back and forth opening my settings menu. Okay, let's go see how Lucia's been and check in with everybody here. Oh my gosh, they're in cold weather clothes. That's so cute. <laughs> of course they are. <laughs> because that's the kind of game Final Fantasy is. Except for Zero, who's like, I don't even feel the cold. What? <laughs> Glad am I to hear that Garlemald's restoration proceedeth apace, and the people no longer want for warmth. Be that as it may, there is no substitute for appropriate garments in such frigid climes, as I can personally attest. Per Ishtola's advice, I have changed into clothing more suited to these surroundings, the better to blend in. I hope this will suffice. That's a nice detail too, since they've kind of acknowledged that his simulacrum again doesn't feel things the way that we do, and it, of course, like, I assume would not be susceptible to things like cold and like frostbite in the same way that we are. So it's nice to have that acknowledged, but also he's all about fitting in. Zero is just too cool to fit in, you know? Here we are again. Hi, Maxima! You are, as ever, welcome, Arden. I do not believe I have met all your comrades. Lucia's so good. She's so powerful. What does her voice sound like? Fantasy British? Fantasy British. I don't know why, I feel like she's got a little something going on with it, but we'll just stick- we'll stick to the safe bet, Fantasy British. <laughs> Arden, allow me to personally thank you for your assistance during the recent Void Sent incursion. Your actions saved many. What brings you here today? Pray forgive us for not sending word in advance, Commander, but we seek your cooperation in a matter of great import. Some stuff is going down. <laughs> I actually feel especially bad having to say anything to them as they like turn around and just look out at the wasteland <laughs> that their city has become like, oh, another world ending catastrophe. Yippee. <laughs> cool, 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 cool. <sighs> Indeed. We appreciate you consulting with us instead of taking unilateral action. Tis no simple matter to activate the Tower of Babel, and I speak not only of the technological challenges. Personally, I think we must consider the emotional impact of such an action above all else. I mean, yeah, the poor traumatized people of this land. Though we have yet to re-establish a governing body, we provisionally refer to those who remain here as the Garlean community. As you would expect, they are predominantly native Garleans, most of whom are uncomfortable with ethereal manipulation. To compound matters, the trauma inflicted by Anima is still fresh. If the tower were to suddenly light up again, 
It is like to cause distress and open old wounds. Better that than facing a mass invasion by Gold Bez and his voids and hordes, surely. Of course, we acknowledge the gravity of the situation, as well as the promised bloodshed should we fail to act. Yet, even were we to convey your warning to the public, many simply do not understand the workings of magic or the rift. They will struggle to comprehend why they must be forced to relive personal horrors for the sake of something they cannot imagine. What's there to imagine? Haven't these people seen Void Scent with their own eyes? Maybe that's the way in? <sighs> Let us suppose you encounter someone who is freezing in this cold. A natural thing to do might be to make them a fire, yes? <laughs> this is like the breaking it down in the simplest of terms for, for beautiful Zero. But what if that person's sole experience with fire was being badly burned by it, and they harbored an acute fear? Despite the benefits, nay, the necessity of the warmth you offer, they may flee on instinct, or worse, misinterpret your actions for aggression and lash out. So like the fire that torments this individual, the Tower of Babel torments the people of Garlemald. Yet we cannot afford to falter here. We must find a way to help them overcome their fear. I agree. To that end, the Contingent will assist however we can. We should speak with Alfino and Alice. With the rapport they have established with the Guardian people, I dare say they can provide us with valuable insights. In the meantime, Urianje, might I ask that you remain here to oversee the technical aspects of the tower's activation? Hat squad roll out! I actually really like this because I feel as though there are many different characters that people will resonate with in many different ways. And of course, Zero has this other aspect that is the magical aspect of this. So I don't necessarily want to say this is like a direct correlation or misspeak, but something that I know has mattered to a lot of my friends and a lot of people that I know um, that are autistic is having characters in game that they can either, that are like explicitly autistic characters or that can be autistically coded in that like they can be perceived as somebody who uh, experiences or navigates the world in a similar way, right? And I actually really like this with Zero because I feel like having a character that maybe is on the outside looking in of the whole like friendship is the greatest power and <laughs> our heart and our emotions like a shonen protagonist are the things that give us real strength and it's not that that isn't real strength in many ways it's just that like not everybody is always going to be is always going to respond to that kind of theme the same way, right? Because their lived experiences might be different. And if I'm talking like a whole lot of nonsense, please feel free to tell me as well in the comments. But to me, I like having characters that provide different perspectives in those regards, because I think it gives us a way to even experience things that we just take, we assume are just the baseline makeup of experience for others, be it in social interactions, connections, um, relationships, and to then examine that in a different way and um, like realize that it may not always be so straightforward. And of course now like Zero is, is a void sense and has all this other stuff going on, but I like having some of that commentary, especially coming out of an expansion where so much of that like deep emotional um, content and um, you know social connections and bonds were so focused on to get to see a different character that's finding a different way to connect with that or like to still create their own bonds but in a way that's unique to them I, I just I don't know I like seeing I like seeing personally full faith have I that you will win over the Garlean populace in the meantime I shall see to it that all is in readiness with the tower what we really need is just to get like a bunch of psychologists or therapists or because there's a lot of PTSD in Garlemald, you know? There's a lot of big mental health struggles that just being like, just don't be scared of it, won't fix. <laughs> there's some serious internal work to be done here. I will relay the particulars of your endeavor to members of the contingent. Rest assured, we will do our best to assist you. 
If truth be told, had you approached us with your petition earlier, we are like to have declined it. The situation was simply too precarious. But the people have begun to pull themselves up, and I dare to hope that they will lend an ear to your words. Well, let's go see! They might! They might.